All right, guys, what is up? Welcome back. This is a question I get a lot from beginners. How do they send that first email to land their first website project? So in this video, I'm going to break it all down, give you my advice, give you some tips, and give you some actual email templates that you can use straight away to get going with this. All right, so a very common mistake I see with people when they start off with a web design business is they're trying to act too big too fast. They see these other people who are established with web design and they're trying to use the same approach, the same techniques to land clients themselves. Fortunately, it doesn't really work. Uh, there's an expression in success and in business, what got you here won't get you there. And that kind of means that at different stages in business, you're going to be using different approaches. When you start off, you have a lot of uh, advantages as a beginner. And if you're trying to copy the successful businesses, it, there's just this mismatch. It's not congruent with who you are. And you're missing out on all the advantages that you could be using. And instead, you're trying to be something that you're not. So that's not effective, that doesn't work. What's much better is to use what you have when you start and get those first few jobs using that approach and then later start switching up your approach to be a bigger, kind of more professional web design business. It's fine in the beginning to be small, to come across as a beginner, as somebody just starting off. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that as best as possible, but don't feel like you have to pretend you're this big established business when you're not. So let's get straight into how to get started with this. All right, so you've probably been looking at this issue of getting started web design, and you've probably been thinking on the negative side, maybe you have, where you're thinking, I'm not big enough, I'm not experienced enough, I don't know how to sell good enough, but you actually do have a lot of advantages as a beginner, a lot of advantages that a business owner, when they look at you at the stage you're at in business, they're gonna see these as advantages. Uh, one, you're cheap. So when you begin, of course, your rates your prices are not going to be as good as they are going to be when you're highly experienced, when you've been around a lot in business. So in the beginning, you're cheaper. You're more motivated. In the beginning, you're so eager to get out there, do great work. You're going to be putting in extra hours. You're going to be putting in extra time, extra focus, uh, giving it extra attention. And you're going to be highly committed to making sure that you're going to do a great job because you need it to be good. You're starting off in business. These are your first few jobs you want to make sure that the work that you do, that the projects that you do are to the best quality and to the best standard and get the best results possible. So these are things that you should be using. This should be, you should be using this on your email pitches. You should be using this in your sales pitches. When you get on the phone, when you meet people in person, use this to your advantage. This is the advantage you have as a new business. This is how you take market share from people who've been doing this same thing for a while. All right, so to give a bit of an analogy about how this might work, imagine you run a restaurant. You run this uh, successful restaurant. You have all these different positions in the restaurant and two people come in to apply for a job. The first person is wearing this like really fancy business suit. They have a big briefcase. They're trying to act very professional. You know, they have a lot of experience in restaurants. But when you start asking questions to this person, you can quite clearly tell they don't know what they're talking about. And you can kind of tell it's probably their first job ever. They have nothing that they've done previously. They got no work experience. They got nothing they can show you uh, what they've done in the past. Now, the second person comes in and they just say straight up, look, you know, I don't have that much experience. I haven't worked in a restaurant before, but, you know, I'm a super hard worker. I'm very honest. I love working with people. Uh, I've always wanted to work in a restaurant. If you hire me, I'm going to show up first. I'm going to leave last. I'm going to make sure that everything I do, I do to the best of my ability. And they just say it straight up that they have no experience, but that, you know, you should hire them because they're bringing this attitude and they're bringing this work ethic. Chances are you're definitely going to hire that second person because you just know what you're getting. The first person trying to pretend to be something they're not and way overselling themselves. That's not somebody in business that you want to take on um, and work with. It's the exact same when you're applying for web work. If you're trying to come across as this really experienced designer, somebody you know has done all this stuff, and then when clients, potential clients, start asking you questions, you have just nothing to show them. Uh, it's very unlikely that you're going to be successful. So let's get into some actual email templates. One last thing to remember when you're starting with this, when it's your first ever website project, it's just all about getting that portfolio together. To be able to sell bigger projects at a later stage, the most important thing you can have is this track record of helping people. So for now, we're not worried too much about making money. We're not worried too much about profit. All that comes later. That's something uh, we can focus on on a later stage. In the beginning, though, what we really, really need is just three to five really good websites. They don't have to be big. They don't have to be a lot of pages. 
quality just has to be pretty decent and you got to have the ability to show that you got people results. So let's get into the format that I'm going to use and that, you know, I recommend for all my students to use in the beginning. And it is this, this is the email template for people just starting off. This isn't going to work at later stages. This is just for people for their first few projects. So you're going to have an intro. You're going to have the reason for emailing. You're going to uh, have the value to them, you know, potentially working together, context of who you are, and then a call to action. And this is following this classic sales thing of AIDA, which is attention, interest, desire, action. This is a very simple system um, for getting the attention of people when you're selling to them. All right, so very simply, we're going to introduce ourselves in each of our emails. We're going to state our reason for emailing them, something that grabs their attention straight away. We're going to try to communicate some value, why they should listen to us, why this is important for them, why it could potentially help their business. We're going to give a little bit of context of who we are. I know this one says desire. This seems like a mismatch. But basically, we're showing them that we have value in ourselves, uh, that they should get on the phone with us. And, you know, we're building up this potential thing that could help their business. I'll explain that a little more in a few seconds. And then finally, call to action. What we want them to do with this email, what the desired outcome of this email is. All right, so one last thing before we get into the exact emails, which are below here. Uh, these are the three main advantages that you could use as a complete beginner to just hopefully make things a little bit easier. The first is location. So if you live in a location where it's possible to target any sort of local business, that is something you should do. It's much easier in the beginning to sell to somebody who's physically located close to you. It builds a lot of trust. It builds somewhat of a connection with this business owner. They're more likely to choose somebody who they think is based nearby. And it's much easier to sell as well. It gives you that advantage. You know the local culture, you know the situation. So that's going to improve your communication with this business owner. Uh, if you don't have, you know, businesses that you can target nearby, then you can rely on these other two things as well. Preferably, you'll be able to connect all three of these. Uh, the next one is connections. So if you have any friends, family, cousins, friends of friends, people you worked with in the past, uh, a business owner that you use yourself, so maybe a dentist, a lawyer, somebody who fixes your car, the local gym, if you have any sort of connection to link you to potential business owners, you should try use all of those first before you go, you know, cold emailing, cold calling businesses that you got no connection to. So ideally, you know, if you have a local business and you have some sort of connection to this business, it's already making it a lot easier to get this person on the phone, to get this person to listen to what you have to say. All right, so if you tell me, hey, Rob, you know, I just moved to Antarctica. I got no family. I got no friends. Who should I contact? This is the third thing to focus on as a beginner. So if you have any life experience with a past job, um, with some sort of hobby, with some sort of university or club or social group, whatever, if you got experience in something and there's a business related to that, you can use that as a huge advantage. So for me personally, in the past, I've experienced with construction. I used to work in the oil industry in Canada. Uh, I used to work in outdoor sporting centers in Ireland, teaching surfing, teaching sailing. These are things that I could potentially use to my advantage. I could reach out to an adventure sports place and kind of use, and I'll show you how in the emails below, I can use that to build a quick connection and hopefully get the attention of a business owner. Same if I contacted someone in the construction industry, using that thing in my life that I've done in the past to uh, build that connection, build that trust with somebody and potentially get them on the phone. So look back at your life in the past, look at all the things that you've done, maybe list it down on a piece of paper and start thinking of these things that I've done, these things that I know a little about, what businesses can I link to these that just give me a little bit more uh, authority, give me a little bit more experience that I can use as an advantage. All right, so let's get into it, the actual emails. First one, somebody locally. So if you've got a local connection, just a business that you might necessarily know through connections, you don't have any experience in that business, but they are located close by to you. This is a sample of an email that you could send. Let me just run through it pretty fast. So, hey, Jason, just shooting you a quick email about your business. I live locally and I've seen your business around a few times. Anyway, I have some great ideas for a while on how I might be able to help you out while getting more attention on customers for the business. I've been learning online marketing for a while for myself, and I've been looking for someone who I know is a great first client. Plus, I got a special deal you won't be able to resist. 
I was going to come visit in person, but I thought an email first might be best. What way do you prefer? Thanks, Rob. So, I mean, this isn't an amazing email. This is just an example of something very, very simple that you could send to somebody who's located near to you. All right, so this doesn't sound very professional. It's not really meant to. That's the point. We want to keep it casual in the beginning. We want to come across as just a normal person who's just starting in business is reaching out. And there's actually a few sentences here. If you know you wanted to even strip this down further, uh, you could just drop out this whole sentence here and probably this sentence as well. So you could just strip this back to, anyway, I had some good ideas on how I might be able to help you out with getting some more attention and customers to the business. I was hoping to come visit in person. You can just have a very simple email like this. You're basically just getting their attention, using this connection to just build a little bit of trust and then just stating, you know, we should meet up. I got some ideas. Let's get on the phone or let's meet up in person. You're going to do your selling later when you meet them in person, when you get on the phone. But for now, all you're trying to do is get some sort of response, get that communication going and just come across as a small but hungry and motivated business because that's what you are when you start. And that's completely fine. Again, when you first start off, don't pretend that you're this huge business. It's not going to help you to sell. And it's going to be this really incongruent sales message that business owners are just most likely going to ignore. So the next thing that we could send is true a connection. To be honest, out of the three, this is probably the strongest. If we know somebody who owns a business, that's really, really strong. If we know somebody who knows somebody who owns a business, that's still uh, reasonably okay. Let me just spell correct this one. So somebody true a connection. Hey, Sam, I'm a good friend of Jason Muller, and I just wanted to reach out to you about your business. I have been having a good look at what you do, and I think we should definitely talk soon. I got some great ideas I wanted to go over with you, but just didn't know the best way to reach out. Let me know what is best, and hopefully we can talk soon. Regards, Rob. I mean, pretty much any business owner is going to respond back to this in some form. This is quite vague. You know, I'm keeping it vague on purpose. It's very, very casual. And this is a very effective style of communication when you're starting off in web design. You want to get people on the phone. That's going to be your prime time to sell. You don't want to start pitching through email because as a beginner, you just got nothing to show. You got no past results. It's not an effective medium to sell. Best thing with email is keeping it all about getting them on the phone or meeting them in person. All right. And so this third one, the last one is some sort of niche that we have a connection to. Hey, Susan, I wanted to reach out for a while because I know your business well. I have experience with whatever you have experience with, and I have seen you pop up a few times. I got some good ideas I wanted to talk to you about, but didn't know the best way to reach out to you. What do you prefer? Thanks, Rob. So for me, for example, this could be I have experience uh, in the construction industry or I have experience working with outdoor sporting centers or whatever. I could just throw in uh, whatever it is that ties me connects me somehow to this business. Mention it very, very briefly. You don't have to go too much in detail. And then just move on. What's the best way to get in touch? I wanted to reach out. What do you prefer? Thanks, Rob. These are very, very simple emails, but very, very effective as a beginner. So remember this. If you're an advanced web designer, you're going to be using a different style of pitch. You're going to be including you know, results that you got in the past, different uh, links to sites, all this sort of stuff. In the beginning, though, use your advantages. You're small, you're motivated, you're hungry to do some great work. Keep the email casual because you won't be able to sell effectively in the email as a beginner. It's much better to get them on the phone, use a good sales pitch. And I'll teach you that in different videos. But the, for now, the email, keep it simple, keep it tidy, keep it short. And that's going to really increase your chances of getting a positive response. Some subject lines, because I know you guys are going to ask. Again, keep it basic. So something like, hey, you know, if you got their name, definitely stick it in there. Uh, subject line, trying to contact you. Another line, what is best for you? Set up a meeting. Business was wondering some things. You know, keeping it very, very simple. Don't put something in like contacting you about web design. You know, that's it's going straight in the trash. Any business owner is going to open up pretty much all of these all of the time because it's vague and they're just not too sure what it's about. They're going to open it up. They're going to view an email that's very, you know, ca nice and casual in a good way. It's very simple. And all these people are looking for is how to get in touch with them. They should write back to this. A lot of the time they are. From that point, I'm going to show you in other videos how to move forwards along with the sales process, 
close your first few website designs, build a great website, and then move into the more advanced web design stuff where you can charge a lot more money and make a lot more profit. In the beginning, though, it's all about a portfolio. It's all about just getting a few jobs on the board, getting them completed, and then using that at later stages. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit subscribe if this is the sort of content that you like. Any sort of feedback, any sort of suggestions, comment below. A like is definitely appreciated. I want you guys to have the same success at web design that I've had. So that's what these videos are all about. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.